Welcome back to the Gen 20 Podcast. I'm Nicole. And I'm Marina. And today we're talking about boundaries, what they are, why they're important, and how to set them. So what are boundaries? We hear this word a lot. We've talked about it a lot in past podcasts. What are they? Yeah, so I think of boundaries basically as a tool that we use to protect ourselves, whether that's like our mental health, our physical health, our time, you know, all of those things I think are essentially being prioritized by us setting boundaries for ourselves. What do you think? I agree. And I think they can be they can be different because it can be a physical boundary that, you know, it's quarantine. We don't want to be closer than six feet with strangers. Like you're setting a physical boundary. Or if you're in a new relationship and you're not ready to be physically intimate, you're setting a physical boundary. But then you can also set boundaries with yourself like I do where I say, okay, I'm only going to do this much television watching today because I need to get all these other things done. And so I, you know, it's, it's a way that we can navigate our life and give ourselves the parameters for success, happiness, and comfort. Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think boundaries are especially important in our relationships, um, whether it is with close people in our lives or with strangers, because they're essentially saying that, no, we need to prioritize ourselves right now. And I think a lot of times that can come off as selfish to other people. Um, But I don't think that setting boundaries is selfish. And I think it's really important that we help each other, like respect each other's boundaries. For sure. For so long, I felt guilty if I had to say no to something until someone finally said, you're allowed to say no. You're allowed to like need time to yourself. I Someone had asked me to babysit for them and I had planned this whole night where I was just going to watch a movie and drink wine and cook and just have a night to myself. And I thought, oh, well, I'm not really doing anything so I could babysit. And then I realized, I don't really want to do that, but I feel guilty because I technically have the time. And then my friend told me, no, you are allowed to like make a date with yourself so that you have to set that boundary of, no, I can't do this tonight. I would love to help out another time. And it was very freeing to realize, oh yeah, I can, I can say no to things that aren't going to help me because I need that me time to relax and recharge. Yeah, it's interesting because having time, like, that's free, like, having free time doesn't mean that you are free. And I think that's a really important distinction we need to make more often. For sure. There's a quote that is the effect of, you can't pour from an empty cup, and boundaries are basically the equivalent of that. If you don't set boundaries for yourself, you're going to run yourself ragged and you'll never, you'll always be running on empty. And like, it's like the whole, you got to take care of yourself so you can take care of other people. Like numero uno counts first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think boundaries just help you focus on yourself and you can have personal life boundaries, work life boundaries, because it's, if you keep having to give and give and give to other people, you're just going to be stretched so thin that there's nothing left for you. And I think for me, like, Saying no to things is really important because it gives me time and space in my life to be able to say yes to things that I want to say yes to. And I think that if you are not setting boundaries and kind of letting yourself be a doormat, which I think the majority of us have experienced in life where we feel like where you have this like regret about something, you're like, wow, I really shouldn't have said yes to that or I shouldn't have let this person push me into doing this because you really didn't want to do it. I don't think that it serves you or the other person personally because you're not able to give them your best and it's also taking up space for someone else who would a either want to be there or do a better job let's be honest yeah exactly and I think the concept of like oh it doesn't serve me again is like oh that's a selfish it's a selfish thought but we are not perfect beings that are great at every single thing and so if I have two options of activities and I'm doing one that, you know, really energizes me and brings out the best in me or another that takes away from my happiness or exhausts me. And these are both optional, like it's not life or death if I do them. I'm going to want to pick the one that 
serves me because I will be offering the best of myself to other people. Like I know when I am, if a, like if a friend asked me to go to a club, that is not my vibe. I don't like crowds. I don't like loud music. I do not like staying up late. And so if I want to spend time with this friend, I'm not going to say yes because just because I want to spend time with them, I'm going to say no because they do not want me at a club. I am not fun at a club, <laughs> but I, you know, I'll say yes to another daytime sunlight activity mm-hmm. that is more enjoyable because I can be myself. I can relax and I can be comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just had a thought that by not having boundaries, we're essentially giving other people 24 seven access to us which basically means that you are available at all times, like emotionally, physically, mentally to other people, which is just exhausting. That sounds exhausting even just saying it. Yeah. When do you get to be available for yourself then? you? I feel like I would lose all sight of myself if I, if I did that. Yeah. And I think in that regard to think about being able to respect when other people say no to you and not getting upset about it. It's just, it's not... And but I think when I say no to people, it's not about them. It's about me. And I don't think that makes it selfish. I feel like in general, kind of like we've already touched on a little bit, that it serves everyone better when you're really honest about the situations, in my opinion. Absolutely. I think so often, you know, we're told to put ourselves in other people's shoes, but that's not always the case for understanding someone else's boundary because you just don't always know. And so you don't have to know. You don't have to understand why they are saying no to something. You just have to say, okay. And you try to pivot into something that suits you both because- Yeah. Okay. I hear you. I respect you. You know, can we find a good solution here that works for both of us? And I think, yeah, just not taking it personally because it's really not personal in my opinion. Um, And we have a couple of examples we want to talk about in ways that we set boundaries and just general ways to start setting boundaries in your own life. Um, So one of them is to start scheduling your day so you have built-in self-care time. And we've spoken quite a bit about self-care and how, you know, self-care for some people, I mean, myself included, can be an hour to myself every single day where I'm just by myself doing something that I want to do. And, you know, sometimes I do want to be working. Like I have projects I'm really excited about. I really want to work on them. You know, some days I just want to sit in the bathtub and read for an hour. So that's like, it's like listening to yourself and respecting yourself, but also telling other people if they're like, hey, do you want to do X, Y, and Z? Saying, no, I can't, you know, like I have to do this tonight. Or you don't even have to explain yourself. I think it's important to like allow other people just to to have no is a full sentence. Yeah. No is a full sentence. That's always something we can think about and remember. And another thing I have to do for myself, I have to set boundaries with myself and my phone. I set time limits on my social media apps and my TikTok app. (laughs) It's so addictive. Um, I, I, I set boundaries both physically using my phone's app functions to minimize the amount I use. And then I also have to put my phone in another room, especially when I'm working on something that I'm happy to be doing, but I want to make sure I'm focusing. I have to physically set that boundary. Yeah, so that I it's can... like that, that self-boundary of having time just to rest and not do anything else. Yeah, exactly. And I think it's helpful that you... S- learn to set boundaries for yourself because it'll practicing it will help you set boundaries with other people. And, you know, it can be, it can be intimidating to start saying no to people. So you start, start small, start with people who, you know, will not care if you tell them no, like Nicole, I can tell her no. And she's like, okay. And it's great. Yeah. It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. And likewise, and you know, their boundaries are kind of, they can be really random. Like I have to remind my family and friends on the East coast, like, Hey, I can't talk right when you get off at work at five, because that's 2 PM for me and I'm still working. And so as much as I want to talk to you, I can't interrupt my day because I'm, I'm still working. I need to do, I need to finish these projects. Otherwise I feel like I'm running around 
like a chicken with its head cut off trying to please everyone and meet everyone else's ex- expectations and I'm leaving myself behind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think another thing, I can't remember where I read this, but I think you might have shared it with me, Marina, where it was something that to the effect of before you share something with someone, you can ask them if they have like the emotional space for that right now. Oh, yeah. I was, I learned that from a therapist a while back Mm -hmm. when I was talking about how I'm a very empathetic person. So when my friends come to me with problems, I obviously want to help, but I also take on their emotional weight. And I was saying how stressed I felt about that. And she told me, you can just say, I want to support you, but I'm not able to take on a hard conversation today. Is there another way I can help you? until I'm in a better headspace. And it was freeing because I would choose before boundaries. I would just choose to hurt myself in an effort not to hurt anyone else. And that's not the way we treat ourselves. That's not the way we should treat ourselves at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. I really like what you just said there about I would hurt myself in an effort not to hurt other people. I think that's really profound. Yeah. Well, it just, I remember when the same therapist told me, oh, Marina, so what you're saying is you'd rather not tell someone they've bothered you or upset you and just be, it, for risk of like making them a little bit mad and just hold on to the hurt. And I was like, yeah, you get it. <laughs> and she, was, yep, that's and it. she said, no, that's not how it works. We had to work on that one for a couple months, but you know, and it, talking talking it out with your friends you know you don't have to say hey Nicole you really hurt my feelings today and let's set boundaries you can say hey in the past I've let myself get too stressed so I want to start setting this boundary and you can make it if you're worried about setting a boundary with someone you can work on it together so that you both so that you feel comfortable that you're being heard and so that the other person understands what they need to do to help you because ultimately we want to help each other. Mm -hmm. I want to meet my friends at their level that they need. I don't want to make them uncomfortable. I don't want to upset people. I'd rather they just tell me what their boundaries are. Yeah, I completely agree as well. And I think like having a good understanding of your own boundaries and how to communicate them, but also being gentle with each other and other people and realizing that boundaries are kind of a work in progress and it can take someone a while to be able to work up to being to the point where they're like I'm going to say no that I can't join this group call right now because I just don't have the emotional energy for it um at this moment because that is hard for a lot of people to do and a lot of people would rather just you know I don't want to say suffer through the call, but just to avoid the confrontation of saying no, they would just get on the call. Yeah. And I think we're so afraid of disappointing people, like our generation, where the, what, we're, what is it that we're the generation of the participation trophy and the good job trophy? So we have such a fear around disappointing people that we will suffer instead. But in reality, we're all, I feel like more people feel more similarly than anyone realizes. So if you just communicate, they probably won't be disappointed. They'll be happy you said what you need. Mm -hmm. I remember when I first moved to California, my friend was visiting from the East Coast and she wanted to drive to LA and I, from Santa Barbara. And I said, hey, you know what? I'm not comfortable in cars right now. I am just relearning how to drive after living in New York City And the thought of driving to and from and around LA really freaks me out. So I'm sorry, I would love to take you, but I can't go. And that was the hardest, one of the hardest things I ever had to say, which is not a scary or mean thing at all. And she just said, wow, I'm I'm really glad you told me. That's totally fine. We can have other adventures around Santa Barbara. And that reminds me, I need to set boundaries and be better at communicating because I think I would have just suffered. And I was like, Great. We both get something good out of this. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a great example, too, of I think how when we, you know, um, tell other people about our boundaries and share them, it's usually like not as big of a deal as we made it out to be in our heads, you know? 
Yeah, and if someone says no and doesn't respect your boundary, that's on them. That's not on you. That's not a reflection mm-hmm. of your needs or your boundaries being wrong. It's a reflection that that person has doesn't have the mo- emotional maturity or the emotional intelligence to meet you where you need to be. So don't don't let them steal your sunshine, right? Mm-hmm. If you set a boundary and they say no, walk away because that's on them. Yeah, absolutely. Another thing about boundaries that I think is really important is that they help you protect your time, which is one of your most valuable assets because it's something we can't get back and we can't make more of. It's true. It's a finite resource. Yeah, and it's it's ultimately up to us how we spend our time and what we do with it. And it's really, like we've been saying, it really doesn't serve anyone for you to let other people dictate how you spend your time. That's really up to you. And I think boundaries and having you know, firm boundaries in place allow you to spend that time in the most effective way possible to yourself. And that does take into account, you know, building your relationships, building your career, like practicing self-care. Those are all very important things and they're all very important things that need to be protected. And the way you spend your time and your vision and your goals for yourself, really, you're the one responsible for them. Yeah, Nicole, exactly. You're exactly right. They you are the one who knows what you need best. So ask yourself first, feed your soul first, serve yourself first and set boundaries. Yeah, I completely agree. So this has been another episode of the Gen 20 podcast. We're so glad you could listen. Please rate and review on Apple podcasts or anywhere you listen and we'll see you next time. Bye.